Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated. All right. So there's a lot of ways to approach this. Now, first of all, now this, as you know, is the axial view. So if you go from the top and all the way down, you can see we're going to do the bones. This is the axial view. Axial view is one way to do this, and it gets fairly complicated down here until it comes down into the neck. Then there is also the uh, oops, uh, the coronal view that uh, I'll show you once this. And uh, so here's a coronal view, which can also show a lot of details, and that's all back to the posterior. So we'll do it both all in all three ways. The coronal view is also important. Uh, interestingly, uh, axial, coronal, and and sagittal is important here. And the coronal view, especially in this area, it becomes actually very useful because you see the sinuses really well and the and all the mucosa really well. And uh, and then obviously we're also going to do the um, sagittal view because the sagittal view also shows certain things really well. If you come straight from the ear, look, you can actually see the ear inside and, uh, and, and see all the structures over there. So we will do all three views, but what I will do is I will start from the axial view and, um, and we'll cover the structures in the axial view. And from the axial view, we'll try to go further. Now, let me position this correctly. First, let me magnify as much as I can. Right, so I think this is this is actually as big as I can get it, and it should be, and it should show all the structures appropriately. Now let me just get everything in place. All right, so I'm going to start right from the top, right at the top of the head, um, and so the first thing, actually, right at the top, that's the that's the scalp. So we're not going to the scalp, but this is the bone structure. So you can see a suture. In the middle so that's the coronal suture the coronal suture is going to divide these bones into uh, the two parietal bones so you've got the two parietal bones soon you also start seeing the sagittal sorry oh, I can't believe I started absolutely wrong that is the sagittal suture <laughs> and I, I can't believe it and that's the coronal suture and so the sagittal suture divides them uh, into the two parietal bones and, uh, and, and uh, the coronal suture uh, divides it into the frontal bone. And so these two bones that you can see on the top are our uh, parietal bones, and this one in the front is the sagittal bone. Oh, sorry, it's the frontal bone. Wait, let me, where am I supposed to have this pointer? I don't have that pointer. Okay, well, I'll use this. Okay, so let's keep going down. Again, the two parietal bones, you can still see the sagittal suture there, and you can see the coronal suture there. So that's the frontal bone, and these two are the parietal bones. Now we keep going and fairly, we keep going, those bones remain the parietal bones. That is still the frontal bone. And as we keep coming down, the frontal bone remains. And then you can see a little bit of open, this air pockets in the frontal bone, and th those are the frontal sinuses. And this is still frontal bone, as such as you can see here. This is still the parietal bone, two parietal bones. But as you come in fear, you, you might not see it too clearly, but here's another suture. That's a lambdoid suture. It's hard to see in this plane because it is in this plane. <laughs> so it's hard to see actually in the axial plane. But as this lambdoid suture shows up and you go in fearly, now you've got this is now the occipital bone these are the parietal bones and that is still the frontal bone but as you keep going in fearly you see sinuses pop up here so that so th those were not the front that's the frontal sinus as they go down now these sinuses are now the ethmoidal air cells and this is now this is the cribriform plate and that's the ethmoidal bone. Here's the ethmoid bone. 
and you can see the orbits show up here. Um, and as we keep going further down, you see this thing show up over here. And what this is, this is basically your sphen sphenoid, it's part of the sphenoid bone. This is where your pituitary gland is. So that's the cellar tersica. So that's the cellar tersica. And once you see the cellar tersica, then, th then that's where the sphenoid bone essentially begins. And this is the dorsal sally, like the posterior part of the saddle. And th that's the cellar tersica. And so the sphenoid bone begins here and it goes onto both sides. Um, and as we go further and fearly, so this is pretty much the sphenoid bone, but then you see these air cells show up. Now these air cells are in the temporal bone. So when the temporal bone comes through, the parietal bones become much smaller. So you've got occipital bones in the back and then the temporal bone comes to the side. And here you've got the sphenoid bone and on top, you still have the ethmoid bone, but now the ethmoid bone also goes down. Uh, maybe I can put it slightly. Ethmoid bone also goes down as the nasal septum. The nasal septum is made of two bones, but one is the ethmoid bone. And these are the ethmoidal air cells. But this is another, another air cell, which is, and this one is the sphenoidal air cells. So this is the sphenoidal sinus. Sorry, not the air cells, these are sphenoidal sinus, these are the ethmoidal air cells, and now this is the nasal cavity. This is here, the sphenoid bone again, and here we've got the temporal bone, and poster uh, posteriorly it's the occipital bone. Now if we keep going down, you can see how the temporal bone, the big air cells are the temporal bone. And we keep further going down, and you'll notice this thing popping up here. That's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And then the zygomatic process attaches to the zygomatic bone on the other side. But you see this big, people actually don't realize how big the maxillary sinus is. The maxillary sinus is actually quite huge. And when you see this big sinus, and that's the maxillary bone. So that's the maxillary sinus. Now here, it's the zygomatic bone, but here it's the maxillary bone. So this bone is all maxillary bone, but the zygomatic arches are part of the temporal bone, but where they start connecting to the anterior structures, that's the, that's the zygomatic bone itself. So here, that's the maxillary air sinuses. And as you keep going down, that's the sphenoid bone continuing on. And as you keep going down, this is the mandible now showing up. These are the mandibles on both sides. Uh, and the temporal, that's the mastoid process. And here, that's the occipital bones now, and this is where your C, C1 vertebra now begins to show up. And now that's the foramen magnum, that is the C1 vertebra, um, uh, articulating with the occipital condyles, and that is your maxilla. And as we keep going down here, that's the dens of the C2 vertebra, that's the C1 vertebra, that's the mandible. I'm not sure if, the, if I missed that. Yes, that's where I missed. Now this is higher up, sorry, slightly higher up. And that is still your maxilla, but that's your hard palate. And as you go behind the palatine bone, which and, and if I keep going down, that's the maxilla. The maxilla will then become the mandible. These are the maxillary teeth. Then the mandib mandibular teeth will show up. And as the mandibular teeth show up, we, that's the hyoid bone, so we are now in the neck. So that's one way to look at it. Then, then well, I, would, I just realized, would you like me to go through just like the skull bones again, just like a schematic diagram? And if we, if we did that, it'll sort of make more sense in a second. So, uh, well, let's, let's look at it. In this view from Teach Me Anatomy, it's going to be a common image that's going to be used sooner or later. Oops, where'd the image go? There's the image. All right, that's good. So what we did was that, if you look at this, this is like a cross section across here. So that's the frontal bone and it goes all the way down to the upper aspect of the orbit. It's the frontal bone. That's the parietal bone laterally and that's how it looks on the side. 
The occipital bone is actually quite a big bone, but it moves in feelings. So the base of the skull is mostly the occipital bone. And that's what it shows here. This is the temporal bone. Now you can't, you can't see it here, but that's this has all those massive air cells. And this is the sphenoid bone. This is the wings of the sphenoid. And that's where the cellar tersica was. And that's the ethmoid bone. So uh, this is sort of sort of what I showed you. I wish there was a, a lateral view also. Uh, well, I'm sure there's going to be one. And uh, oh, let's look at it from the front. From the front, let's look at this diagram. This diagram actually looks quite all right. <coughs> now we're going to view this from the front also. The front, most of the front above is the frontal bone. Then actually when you really come from the front, the first bone up, you'll see the cartilage, but then you'll see the nasal bones, and then you'll see the nasal septum. And the nasal septum is actually two bones. It's the ethmoid bone in the front and the vomer in the back, uh, inferiorly in the back. I'll show you vomer actually extends further into the back and the ethmoid is a bit more in the front. Uh, and then there's a maxilla, which is right in the front. And the mandible also sh shows up in the front. And then as you go uh, further posterior, you'll start seeing the zygomatic bone. Then the zygomatic arches will show up. And as you move further behind in the orbit, you'll see the sphenoid bones uh, and you'll see the temporal bone. And then as you move further back, then you, you know, be pretty much coming to this section or even this section. Uh, where well, you'll see the temporal bone, the parietal bone, and further all you see the occipital bone. So we're going to look at it from that view also. We're, we're just going to do that. And we're also going to look at it from this view. So it starts, you're going to start to see the ear. It's going to be the other way around. We're going to start from the left side, not the right. Yep, this is the right side. So you're going to start from the ear. And then when you go into the ear, you're going to see the temporal bone, a bit of the sphenoid and the parietal bones and the frontal bones. And then as you move further, you're also going to see the mandible um, the angle of the mandible, the temporal mandibular joint, the zygomatic process as you go deeper in, and then the eyes will show up, and then we will go all the way to the midline, where all these structures you'll sort of see from the midline. So those are the main bones. The only bones here that aren't shown are the palatine bone, which is a small bone. Uh, if I can see the base of the skull, which is the other way around the inferior view of the base of the skull, like that one. Okay, so um, and so we saw the maxilla inferiorly. This is small bone is the palatine bone. So this bone is something that it's not really too visible. But when you see the palate, the posterior aspect of the palate, hard palate is the palatine bone. And apart from the palatine, that's the vomer. So that's also there. That's the sphenoid bone. It's not really labeled here. That's the zygomatic arch, of the zy that's the zygomatic bone, sorry, that's the zygomatic arch of the temporal bone. That's the mastoid, oh, that's the styloid process, but next to it, it doesn't show very well, but next to it is the mastoid process. That's where you see a big lump on the, you can feel it in the back of your, uh, behind your ears. And then of course, this is large occipital lobe, and we will be going through those. As, uh, along with that, actually, we will also be going through the foramens and now that we're here, I might as well discuss those foramen. So let's look at this one. Oh, why are you behaving like that? So there's the cribriform plate. Then there's the optic canal that goes in there. Uh, the optic nerve through the optic canal. Then there's a superior orbital fissure that we will do. Then the foramen, foramen rotundum. I'll show that to you. Foramen valley. I'll show that to you also. Foramen spinosum, I'll show that to you also. And this is foramen lacerum, I will not show that to you because nothing really comes through it. It's, there's a cartilage in there, even though it's a nice big foramen. A small vein actually does pass through it in some nerves. Uh, but there's a carotid canal that I will show you in good detail so you can understand the sort of Z-like shape of the carotid canal. Uh, and that I'll show you. And I will show you the jugular foramen. And before that, I'm sorry, I didn't show you that. And that's the internal acoustic uh, meatus with the internal acoustic canal. And the hypoglossal foramen, which is down here, you can't see. I will show that to you also. And we will see all of that in the CT. 
So that was just a bit like a review of, of what we're doing. And uh, so let's do that back on CT. So we've done that in the axial view. Now let's do that in the coronal view. So we should, let's start all the way from the back, even though starting from the front might be more sensible in a way, but all right, I mean, either way is fine. So that's your occipital, that's your occipital area. And so that is the lambdoid suture. So above here are your parietal bones and below is the occipital bone. Now, as we come forward, you will see that's the occipital lobe. You can see um, the sagittal suture there. So these two are your parietal bones. As long as you can see the sagittal suture, it might not be too visible in that contrast. But if I change the contrast, you know, you can see the sagittal suture right there. And if you can see the sagittal suture, then these are the two parietal bones. Uh, and that's the occipital bone. We'll keep moving forward. We'll keep moving forward. That is uh, uh, the suture between your parietal bones and the occipital bone. That's still the lambdoid suture. And now the temp soon the temporal bone will show up. You'll see with the air cells. So that's still the occipital bone. Now you're going to see spinous processes show up. You see now those are the air cells and now that's the temporal bone. You can see the division where the parietal bone and the temporal bones, that's a squamous suture. The suture between the parietal and the temporal bones called a squamous suture. And you can see the air cells showing up here. This underneath is still the occipital bone and these are the two still the parietal bones. And here, what you see down here, now that's the, there's a very small spinous process on the C1 vertebra, so that's your C1 vertebra. That's the foramen magnum developing there. These are your mastoid air cells, and that's, again, continuing with your parietal bone. Let's keep going. You can see the ears popping up in the side. Uh, so again, foramen magnum, these are the occipital bones. Let me just take you a bit further so you can see the math. That's your mastoid process. And those are your mastoid air cells. So those are the, that's, that's, that's in your temporal bone. That's still the occipital bone. That's C1, that's C2. These again are your parietal bones. You can still see the um, sagittal suture in there. And let's keep going, let's keep going. And where are we here? Now that is your uh, external acoustic meatus. I will do all the foramens again. Let's just do the bones first. And uh, and let's keep going. So your occipital lobe is going... Yes, oh, where did the occipital lobe stop? So as you keep... Now that's the occipital lobe, but as you keep going further, you see the bone extending up here. Now when it gets to this point, th that's where your sphenoid bone has become. So that is the cellar tersica again. And now your sphenoid sinuses are beginning here. So that is basically your sphenoid bone. That is again your temporal bone. And those are your parietal bones. The occipital bone has actually just ended here. It's, it's receded. That's the, that's not the, sorry, that's C1. That's the occipital bone. And that's the dens of the C2. So the occipital bone is going to vanish here. And the parietal bone is going to, uh, sphenoid bone is going to show up here. And, oh, and what do you see here? Let me, let me go back and show you this area again. Let me, what do you see here? Now, this is your temporomandibular joint. So that's the mandible. So that's the mandible. It'll show up on both sides. And those are your temporomandibular joints. And let's keep going. So now you've got the sinuses show up. Here is the sphenoid sinus. And now that's your lesser wing of the sphenoid up there. And that's now, now we're coming right to the front. So we're coming right here. Oh, notice something here. You can't see uh, uh, the sagittal suture anymore. So let's go back. Where does that happen? And you see, you can see the sagittal suture here, but at a certain point, you see a little bit of hazy lines and enormous. And then beyond those hazy lines, there's no sagittal suture. So now this is the frontal bone. And as we keep coming forward, that's the frontal bone. Um, that's the ethmoid bone developing up there. These are the sphenoid sinuses. That's the posterior aspect of your um, uh, nasal passage. Those are the mandibles. So let's keep going further forward. Let's keep going and let's just wait a little bit. So now you can see the orbits developing. 
this is really nice now that I have that. You see that thing in the center? That's your, that's your optic nerve. And then you've got the four muscles that you can see around here, the superior rectus, lateral rectus, medial rectus, and inferior rectus. So that's really good. That's the ethmoid bone. That's the nasal septum. That is the ethmoid bone up here. But posteriorly, it is the vomer. Here you can see this big frontal sinus developing here. And these are the nasal concha. So there's an inferior turbinate or concus, middle turbinate, and there's also a superior turbinate, which is here. And it'll be more obvious as we keep going forward. And now you've got your ethmoidal air cells come up. Here you see this is where the maxillary sinus opens in. You see that? The maxillary sinus opening in. Into the middle, middle turbinate. You can also see your sphenoidal sinuses opening in and the ethmoidal sinuses opening in into the into the nose and as you keep going further and further now this is the hard palate so that's usually the maxillary bone really posteriorly it's the palatine bone but here's the maxillary bone with the teeth now you can see them and now as you keep going anteriorly these are the frontal sinuses in the frontal bone and there's an area that you can see the frontal sinus is also draining. And as we keep going forward, and that's about it here. Now you're going to see the nasal bones. Those, those are the nasal bones on both sides. Those are the front two teeth. And as you go, now that's nothing but cartilage right at the tip of your nose. So that's how we look through that. And uh, I hope you're following. I hope I'm not boring you. And let me know if you have any questions. All right, so let's do the same thing with this one and start from the ear on one side. And you can really see that ear really well. And then as the, ear, as, the, as the skin ends, this is, you can see the temporal air cells. So that's the mastoid process will show up here. That's your mastoid process. But above that, before that, you can see this suture. This is suture between the parietal bone and the temporal bones. So that's the parietal bone up there, the temporal bones up here. As we keep going further, you can see the zygomatic arch, or the, sorry, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. As we keep going further and further, that's the zygomatic bone that's going to start showing up there. And that is your parietal bone. Uh, the occipital bone is going to show up in a second. There's your occipital bone. And there's your frontal bone. It's going to be more obvious in a little bit. And here is your uh, sphenoid bone. And as you go further, oops, I forgot to mention there's so many things at every point. There's your mandible. And there's your temporal mandibular joint. And as we keep going further, I should like stop at a certain point. That's it, mandible. Here is your sphenoid. Now you see this is opening up. Now this is your frontal sinus. There, sorry, this is your maxillary sinus. That's your frontal sinus up there. Uh, you can see the orbit. You can see the superior rectus and the inferior rectus. Uh, you'll be able to see, you can see more of those if you spent a little bit of time there. And we let's just keep going into the midline. You see, well, oh, let me go back. Now sh let me show you that the temporal bone is slowly ending. Let me go back. You can see the occipital bone is getting larger here and getting bigger as we go into the midline. And when we reach the exact in the middle line, let me just take you right to the middle line and then we'll go further to the side. Now there is the middle line. Why is that the middle line? Because you see the nasal septum. Now if I move to one side, there's your frontal sinus draining in. These are the ethmoidal air cells and that's the sphenoidal sinuses. That's the cella tersica. That's where the pituitary is. That's again your maxillary uh, bone, and that is your hard palate of the maxillary bone, and at the posterior aspect, the palatine bone. So let's go back into the midline. Oh no, I'm further from them now. This is exactly in the midline. So you can see a bit of the uh, cartilage and the septum. That's the nasal bone. That bone, the one higher up, is the ethmoidal bone still. That's still the cribriform plate. That bone down here is the vomer. And if I keep moving to one side, that's that's pretty much it. And then you can see the occipital lobes here. Uh, and this is a funny thing. This is C2, that's the dens. 
and this is C1, that is C2. But if you look, C2 is just going to pop up large up there. That's the dens of the C2. That's the C1. And that's the foramen magnum. Now, I'm sure I've missed something here because I mean, there's so many things. But uh, how, how do you think it's going? How, 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 how have you... Any questions or anything? Following so far? More or less? All right. Oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I, the, uh, if you if you look at all these air cells, there's quite a few. So you know that's your sphenoidal, that's your ethmoidal, that's your frontal, and then you've got very big, you know, two maxillary ones. Your whole cheek essentially is this bone, but there's a big air cell in there. Now this is one thing that is actually easier to show if I had a real skull, but you can see the size of it actually. You can quite understand it. Now if this was, first of all, imagine this being solid bone. Like, I mean, that would just be one big chunk of bone and uh, purposeless really. And so we really don't know why they exist. They're all hypotheses, but the things that they do, they do keep the skull light. So it's not hardcore bone. They resonate your voice because when people have sinusitis and the sinuses are filled, the voice becomes quite dull. So it resonates your voice. Um, and those are the only really two reasons that, uh, uh, that, that I think anatomists and even myself have sort of come to the conclusion that that's why they exist. They keep it light and resonate the voice. I can't think of anything else. Um, and obviously the pathology, <laughs> you will probably see the pathology associated with it because they've got mucus lining and if for any reason their drainage is blocked or some people get uh, allergic reactions and there's a lot of uh, fluid that uh, is produced and it gets inflamed and it causes sinusitis. They have surgical significance also. You can go through the nose and you know if you had to do pituitary surgery, then the options are going through the nose or sometimes even going through the orbit. So, surgical significance. Anyway, there you go. Any questions? So, well, what else? So I think we've gone through most of the bones, the lacrimal bones, and I'll, I'll go through the lacrimal. I haven't done the lacrimal bone, but I will do that when I do all the foram foramens. So you've seen the frontal sinus, the sphenoidal sinus, the ethmoidal air cells, and the maxillary sinus. Uh, all right. So let's go and do the foramens. And uh, I just don't know what's the best, best way to do it. Um, I'll show it to you in the axial view. That's, that's the first main view to, to see them. But then after the axial view, we should also be able to see them in the other views. All right, so let's go from the top down. Here we are at the top. We're going down. And first, first for a, it's not really a foramen. It's a cribriform plate. It's a plate of little cells through which the olfactory nerve goes through. And it's in the ethmoid bone. So that's where the cribriform plate lives. And what goes through it? Cranial nerve one. Now, I've got some pathologies. When I was doing this, I was wondering, should I go through cranial nerve pathology with you or tumors so i guess that is well that can be that we can discuss other otherwise but you should know what goes through each of these foramens that, that's essential knowledge so what goes through um the cribriform plate is um the olfactory bulb uh and little little nerves coming out of the olfactory bulb cross through the cribriform plate and those little nerves is what makes the cribriform plate and essentially this is the only place you can actually smell you cannot smell any other part of the nose. You can feel like you can sense heat, temperature, uh, and even other toxic things, but smell is only here. And, and this area actually feels nothing else. Like you can't feel temperature or pain in this area. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, smell associated. Okay, so that's your cribriform plate. Um, all right, so right next to it, you can see this foramen here. And if I just move up and down, this one. Can you see there's something going through there that's going into the eyeball? And that's the optic nerve. So, oops. So what will that be? That's the optic canal. And the optic canal exists 
in the sphenoid bone. So that's part of the sphenoid bone. So that's going through the sphenoid bone. So that's your optic canal. Uh, here, as you can see, the cell artistica. Now, there's another opening. That's the optic canal, but you can see another opening here, another opening there. And if I go up and down, you can see that opening moves forward and back a bit. And that is the superior orbital fissure. These two are the superior orbital fissure. So what goes through the superior orbital fissure? Cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6. So all the motor nerve to the supply. Uh, it's a motor supply to the eye, motor nerve supply to the eye. So cranial nerve 3, I think oculomotor, um, trochlear, and abducens nerves. And V1 of V1, which is V is for 5. So uh, the trigeminal nerve, the first part of the trigeminal nerve, which is the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, also goes through here. And if we get time, I hope we can do a few. I'll show you the route it also takes if we have time. And so there was your superior orbital fissure. So let's keep going down. Let's keep going down. Let's keep going down. And then the next major foramen it should pop up here. There you go. One pops up here. There was another one. Will, same one will pop up there on the other side. This is foramen rotundum. And foramen rotundum carries V2, the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. That is for amen rotundum. Now, if we keep scrolling further down, keep an eye in this area, there is for amen ovale. And there's the other for amen ovale on the other side. So that's for amen ovale. Right next to it is for amen spinosum. That's for amen spinosum. So what goes through for amen ovale is V3, which is the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. And what comes through foramen spinosum is the middle meningeal artery. So the middle meningeal artery will be coming through here and moving along the cranial side that way. So that's ovale and rotundum on this side, ovale and, sorry, ovale and spinosum on this side, and ovale and spinosum on this side. Now there's another thing that happens at this level. I'll go up a bit. And I want you to see these two things here. You see that? These two things are the optic canals. So the optic canal have like this tortuous root. If I go down, you'll see them turn this way. That one will also will turn that way. And then it goes downward. So that's also the optic canal. And that is still the optic canal. And if you keep, oh, sorry. Uh, carotid canal. I just I think it's late at night for me. I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh, the carotid canal. That's also the carotid canal. And if I keep going down, you will see the carotid carotid canal actually leads into the internal carotid artery. So you follow the internal carotid artery up. It will go. Oops. It will go up into the carotid canal right there. Then pass through the carotid canal like that, and then come out of the carotid canal up here. That's the carotid canal, carotid canal, and carotid canal on the other side. There you go. So that's the carotid canal. And I will show you all of these in, in the other views also because it is very useful to see these in the other views. Now, up at this level, if I keep scrolling downwards, there's going to be this big foramen on these two sides. That it was, oh, it's that one, that one there. And here it is that one. That is the jugular foramen. And what goes through the jugular foramen? Uh, cranial nerve 9, 10, 11 go through the jugular foramen. And the sigmoid sinus drains into the jugular foramen. And so continuing down the jugular foramen, you will see the uh, internal jugular vein on both sides. That's where the internal jugular vein is. And so that's your jugular foramen there. Before the jugular foramen, because it's a bit elusive, have a look here. I can't believe I missed it. But, oh, there it is. I'll find it. Do you see that one? This one there. That's the internal acoustic meatus. And so uh, that's the internal acoustic meatus, and that's the internal acoustic canal. And which nerves go through here? The facial nerve and um, uh, the vestibular cochlear nerve goes there. And that actually is the cochlea. 
over there that is the cochlea. So those are actually the semicircular canals. It doesn't, I also struggled to see it, but that is the cochlea. That's one of the semicircular canals, that's the other semicircular canals, that is the cochlea. And those are really the main ones. We've got a few more, just a few more, and we've done the jugular foramen as we go down. Then, then just around foramen magnum, which is right here, there is the hypoglossal canal, which is this one. You see that? That is the hypoglossal canal, and the hypoglossal nerve goes through that one. And that's the hypoglossal canal on the other side. And here there we are. Oh, and one more, one more, one more. It's hard to see here, but that's your mastoid air cells, and that's your styloid process. And there is a styloid mastoid foramen, which is actually hard to see here. It's right between the mastoid process, uh, styloid process and the mastoid process, but it is better seen in the other views, and I'll show them to you. Any questions so far? Let's just keep this going then. Uh, actually, let's open this one up to the orthogon. So we've done those. Let's go up to the top again and see those again. Okay, here we are. Cribriform plate. Now I'm going to click on it here and have a look how it looks here, which I'm sure you can understand. That is the cribriform plate there. That's the ethmoid bone, cribriform plate. And I'm sure you can understand here also. That's how the ethmoid plate and the cribriform um uh plate and the ethmoid bone look over on this side so that's good all right furthermore that is your optic canal and that is how the optic canal looks on a coronal view which is pretty good sagittal view not so good but in the coronal view you can sort of see the optic canal pass through and the optic nerve there joining in with the eye so if you follow that structure it will lead you to the optic canal there you go those are the two optic canals very nice the superior orbital fissure which is this one it's not too well seen in either of the two views but there's a superior orbital fissure as it goes down you can sort of see it that way but it's not really well seen in both of them. that's the superior orbital fissure there not there, there's a fissure, and you keep going down until it ends. So that's a superior orbital fissure, best seen in an axial view. Okay, so where were we then? After the superior orbital fissure, we go down, we saw foramen rotundum, which was coming up here. There's a foramen rotundum, that one right there. Foramen rotundum, not very well seen here, but really nicely seen here. That's how the foramen rotundum looks like. It actually opens up sort of anteriorly, and then and that's into and there's your maxilla right there, and then actually and the nerve, uh, the foramen rotundum where the maxillary nerve comes, it actually comes out of here and then goes down the floor of the orbit, and continues in the floor of the orbit and moves forward. All right, so all right, let's keep it going. The carotid canal is right there. So you can sort of see the carotid canal here, but the carotid canal is really nicely seen in this view. So let me just show you. Let me just go down at the carotid canal and see how it turns sideways, you see? And as I pass here, as I move it here, have a look at the carotid canal here. So let me show you. So let me go through there and there. And, and then as we scope lower, the carotid canal goes down like that. Let me show you, actually, the carotid canal up here, actually. So in an image, if you actually look at the carotid artery going through the carotid canal, it, it, this shows a good way of how it travels, it does, but there are certain diagrams that actually show, this is really good. So it goes up like that. It enters the carotid canal here, and then it moves anteriorly, and then moves superiorly, and comes out of here. And then it goes around the cell of Tersica, it actually forms the circle of Willis. So uh, that, I hope, is sort of 
ob visible here when we when we sort of see that that that's the carotid canal that's where the carotid uh, artery will enter and as we move superiorly it will it will the canal will move become horizontal and then as we keep moving superiorly it exits here and as we keep moving superiorly this is where the circle of willis is and that's our carotid canal if we keep going down then we're going to see oops where was that oh i always missed there you go this is and if you can see over there it's well it's really seen nicely here in the coronal view also that is the internal acoustic canal and you can see the external acoustic canal really well also and that's where though you can see those little three semicircular canals that's where the cochlea is uh not too good here it doesn't look too good here um all right let's keep going further down and see the jugular for going up uh see the jugular foramen there's the jugular foramen right there that's what the jugular foramen will look like in a coronal view and you can see it really nicely in a sagittal view here so that's the jugular foramen Oh, let's look at the other side also. And you can see it on the other side. Very good. Now we're getting to the mastoid. Oh, here you can see the styloid mastoid frame. And that's, that's pretty much it. You see that one? And so you can see it really well. Oh, let me get back here. You can see it really well in um, the coronal and sagittal view. That's your styloid, styloid mastoid frame. And so the facial nerve is actually coming through there. So you can see it really well in your uh, sagittal uh, and coronal view, but not too well in the axial view. So that's one thing that you can see much better. So that is your styloid mastoid foramen right there. And this is the one on this side. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. There it is on the other side. And there it is. So the facial nerve exits there. And if we keep it, well, we've done the jugular foramen and what is left then and if we keep going down here the hypoglossal canal where was the hypoglossal canal hmm above here so there's your jugular foramen after the jugular foramen you keep going down and i believe it evades me but i believe this is the hypoglossal canal here but hypoglossal canal as i follow it here have a look of it over here The same on this side and that is the hypoglossal canal and I think I think that's really it uh, oh and one last thing of course that's the occipital condyles articulating with C1 and that is the dens of C2 And um, so this is a, a bit of a quick run through of the bones. And I think, I think, I, I don't think we can do more than that. Uh, I think we've done the mandibles and the temporal mandibles. Yep. Yeah. I think that's it. Uh, I, will, I can discuss uh, the course of the cranial nerves. And I guess we'll do that when we do the quiz. Okay. So you want to break for about five minutes and then start with the quiz. Okay, so I've done the bones and sutures, and we'll start with the axial view. I hope you can see it well, and I guess we'll do it, you know, first. So, right at the top, it's a suture. What is it called? Uh, that, would be the sagittal. that is a sagittal suture, correct. Okay. Now, a bit further down, you get to answer a few questions. And let me know what you're looking at. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, let's see. So, frontal bone. Yep, correct. A is frontal bone. And B, B, is parietal bone. B is parietal. That is the sagittal suture. 
and C. Coronal suture. Correct. Good job. Well, we're getting well off to a good start. Uh, let me know at your turn. Let me know if you can't see these lines because I couldn't think of a better color. Correct. Correct. C is the parietal bone. That is occipital. Uh, there's just these little lines here, which is actually D suture, but I've got that. Uh, but, uh, but if you don't get it right, right, that's fine. Uh, occipital bone is fine. But do you know the name of the suture? I can't remember. It is the lambdoid suture. <laughs> of course it is. And B, you already got it. If it's, it's the bone of that sinus. There's just the frontal bone. Yeah, yeah. Of course it is. And... Uh, uh, all right, um, now we've gotten one step further down and if you're confused, let me know what you're looking for because what you're looking at now sort of further explain what I'm trying to point at. Yes, A is the sphenoid bone um, and I didn't go into the specifics of it. That's the dorsal sala of the sphenoid bone, and that's the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. But the sphenoid bone is fine. If you're going to... B is temporal. I believe it truly is. I actually... Could it be the parietal? You know... That could be the parietal bone. You want? Do you want to check? Let's let's see. Well, we're up here. We're up at this level, and so oh, of course you can't. Why? Why am I doing that? Okay, uh, I I actually yes. Uh, where is my oh? Where is my zoom? That is not my correct zoom. Okay, stop share, and share entire screen. Can you see the whole screen now? Yeah. Excellent. So can you see this here? And so I think we're at this level. And so that's what we're thinking. So let's click on it. And there's the bone. So that's definitely, that's definitely the temporal bone. I think that is the temporal bone, or is it the parietal bone? Because there's a suture. So that, you know, you, you've got it right. So that is that is the occipital bone. You know, I can't tell if it's the temporal or the parietal, but you're very right. It's right at the, it's right at that angle. <laughs> yes, I can't tell if it's temporal or parietal. But I think this is a good discussion to have. So I will actually name it, I will call it the, Temporal bone. Uh, that no, that's not nasal bone, nor is it the cribriform. It can be. I I think if you wrote cribriform plate, I won't consider it wrong. But right in the center of the cribriform plate, it. Nasal septum, but what bone makes the nasal septum at this level? No, Vomer is lower down. It's the same bone that makes the cribriform plate. No, ethmoid bone, correct. The ethmoid bone. 
Yes, it's a, it comes very thin and in the midline. And the, pa, half of the nasal septum is the ethmoid bone, and the other half is the vomer. Now, I'm not sure what I was thinking about E, because E is also the ethmoid bone. But I guess that's good to know that, you know, that's the ethmoid, that also is the ethmoid bone, and that's also the ethmoid bone there. So that's good. And C is the suture between this bone, which is the occipital bone, and the temporal bone. So what's the name of that suture? No worries. Squ no, squamous. Squamous suture. There you go. That's done. Well done. Okay. <laughs> yes, George. No worries. Oh, it's a dog. <laughs> Dogs. Dogs, another child. But that's all right. Right, so, um, B would be the back of the temporal bone. Yeah. Um, and then C would be the mastoid. No, those are the mastoid air cells. Oh, mastoid, sorry. Of which bone? Temporal? Yeah, temporal bone. D is just the occipital, correct? It's just a bone which is associated with this. Yes, it is. <laughs> I heard that. Yep, maxillary bone. Or the maxilla. Oh yeah, mandible is like upper upper teeth is maxilla, lower teeth mandible. And and the mandible can move, the maxilla doesn't. So what is A? You got the right. You're you're you're, you're touching it in the right place. It is it is the zygomatic process. <laughs> of the temporal bone and so that's what it is great so well now that i'm here i actually missed a couple of things i should have paid more attention so that's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone that is the zygomatic bone that is the zygomatic bone but further here it's the maxilla so i kind of have that at, at a bit of a uh, uh, area where you know the zygomatic and the temporal uh, and the maxilla are quite close and another thing I missed is you see this I have to demonstrate this so I have to I might as well demonstrate now you see that 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 uh, uh, that uh, sort of foramen but that's not a foramen that's a duct and that is the nasal lacrimal duct and I had to show that to you um, and well now that we're so there it is you see that let's click on it you see that there and you can see that there. This is the duct that connects your eyes to your nose. So when you when you cry or all the tears, not even when you cry, the regular lacrimal secretion has to drain into your nose. And so this is the nasal lacrimal duct. And the cool thing about it is that where it opens in, when you get higher up into the, into the nose, where it opens in near the orbit, that's where your lacrimal bone is. The lacrimal bone is a small bone, uh, and it is hard to sort of observe, uh, but this is one way to observe it. Let me show it to you. Oops, not that one. Let me show it to you again. Uh, the skull uh, orbit, let me, oh, maybe the skull bones. I shall show you. 
and in in one aspect maybe in this one it'll show you there is a little lacrimal bone you see that there it's a little lacrimal bone the, the reason it's 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 an independent bone and in there is the lacrimal duct and so if you want to find the lacrimal bone you you find that area it's actually the duct is quite obvious so it's right there that's the duct and you chase it up and you will lead to lead you to the lacrimal bone and oh, same thing on the other side so that's the duct and it will lead you to the lacrimal bone in the orbit so i'm glad i got to show you that <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Why? How do I find? No, it, it's supposed to open in the inferior. I think it's the only one that opens in the inferior. Uh, but I can't remember that. Now, well, let's see it. Let's see where it opens. Maybe we can find out. So there it is. And yep, if you look at it, let me move the arrow aside. If you look at it opening, it is opening into the inferior meatus. It is the only one that opens into the inferior meatus. Nice one. All right. Well done. Let's keep going. Now, uh, now it's Jim's turn. No, A is not the palatine bone. Palatine bone is, but it is the hard palate. So, what bone makes what bone makes the majority of the hard palate? That is the maxillary bone, absolutely. So that's the maxilla. Correct. Yes, yes. Now, no, no, no. But now, these are the air cells of temporal bone, but now they really are in the mastoid process. You could say mastoid process, almost there. Uh, let, let me show. So you see, that's the mastoid process. If I click there, you see, that's the mastoid process. And so this is just slightly higher up. So, you know, if, if yeah, well, it pretty much is the mastoid process. And that's where the mastoid air cells are. The mastoid air cells are relevant. Well, f of, uh, well first of all, they're air cells. So, you know, they, they keep it light. But ear infections... Uh, can drain into mastoid air cells and sometimes and infect this whole area and that's when they become clinically relevant and causes and if, if you've got if somebody uh, common in the developing world uh, children with ear infections that have pain behind the ear uh, what you're worried about is the infection getting into the mastoid air cells and sometimes they even leak out of it so that's where that you will hear of that and you can see how close it is to the ear canal cool all right and see nothing fancy here we've done this before occipital bone yes now i've just done the bones here so i, I don't think i labeled the sinuses but these are the frontal sinuses ah oh, what am i saying maxillary sinuses i have to really be careful with my speaking. I just don't understand why. <laughs> As an anatomist, uh, I say these things wrong. I get my left and right wrong. <laughs> it's also it's also a personal hiccup. I just can't fix it. All right. You don't recall it? I I I tend sometimes I I I make these little little mistakes. I get left and right long, and I just say, yeah. I just you know, when you go with the flow, I go too much with the flow. <laughs> All right, uh, your turn. Yes, dens of C2. It's e yeah 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 correct correct that's the mandible and C that is C one correct. 
Correct. All right. That's fantastic. What's in this policy one? Transfers for Amen. No, it's an art there's an artery in there. And a vein. A very 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 important artery and vein. The vertebral artery. The vertebral artery comes here and then from here it'll curve in and go into uh through the foreman magnum. So it's funny, the two arteries that supply the brain, the vertebral arteries and the internal carotid artery, they both have a very sharp term. And it's just, uh, you know, I mean, it, well, it works. It seems to work well, but it's just like you worry that, you know, why would that, those two arteries have two very sharp terms. Okay, so now we're doing the coronal view. So we're coming from the back. And so this is the real posterior view. Uh, so <coughs> what is this? It's a suture. That is the lambdoid suture, correct. So I got that wrong, but all right. Next one. Slightly hard. Yes. Yep, parietal bone, yep. Yep, occipital bone. Done, let's keep going. A, A, absolutely. It is C1, but it is the spinous process of C1. But yeah, C1 is good. C1 has a very small spinous process. Some say it doesn't have one. If that is C1, then B would be C2, which is axis. That is a sagittal suture again. Correct. E is a suture. Squamous, yep. F. Yep, but which bone? Which bone? So, isn't it uh, different? No. The bones? No, no, no. The air cells are, well, you can call them mastoid air cells also, but because that's the mastoid process, but all the air cells are in one bone. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you're not wrong. So what it's like is that if you look here, you see all these air cells, that's all the temporal bone. So this is the whole temporal bone. And when it comes really low, that's the mastoid process of the temporal bone down there. So though they, they call them mastoid air cells, probably because of its clinical significance. They, it's spoken about a bit more. Uh, but th these are all air cells and they're all in the temporal bone. And so... That, 
Oh yes, the Terion. I should have I should have done something for the Terion. Um, yes, that's a weak part. I'll show you here. Hmm. Yeah. No, no, that, that's not because of the air sales. I'll tell you the Terion is weak because of two two particular reasons. You look at this. You see that's the size of the skull, the thickness of the skull. Keep looking at the point where it becomes really thin. So you see, it really becomes thin at this area. See how thin that is, right? Now that is the Terion. And so it's, apart from the fact that it's so thin, it also has the min middle meningeal artery here. And, and so, and it's also, you know, you can hit the side commonly. So these are three aspects. Hmm? How do I sound yeah. Yeah. So it, I, it makes no sense to me. And sometimes you really wonder, you know, and, and, uh, <laughs> yes. it probably does, but it's thin part of the bone and, uh, and it has three sutures there. That's another thing you might as well see. Let me just show you skull bones. If I tarry on, it'll actually bring it over and that's the tarry on there. So it actually, well, I should have had a bigger version. So here, that's the temporal bone and that's the zygomatic arch. That's the sphenoid bone, that's the frontal bone, and that's the occipital bone, and that's the terion right there. So apart from being thin, it's also full of sutures. And, uh, and the middle, uh, uh, middle meningeal artery, uh, let me write that, meningeal artery is also right there. And if they, well, that's a schematic diagram showing it, but yeah, this is a good one to show too. So, I, I showed you foramen spinosum. So the, through the foramen spinosum, the middle meningeal artery comes here. Let's hope this downloads quickly enough so you can see it clearly. So the middle meningeal artery comes here. That's the terion, and then it goes, divides. So three aspects. The first aspect is that it's thin, it's got many sutures, and the middle meningeal artery is here. So a hit on the terion can give you a brain bleed which is a layman's term, brain bleed. It is actually not a brain bleed, but what sort of bleed is it? It is an extradural hemorrhage, absolutely. So it's the most common cause of an extradural hemorrhage is a hit at the terion causing a rupture of the middle meningeal artery. And it's an extradural bleed. So that's, so are they, as well, I guess you get it. And, uh, and it's right there, you can't see it. And so you know what sort of a, a image it will, it will show. We did that last time, so cool. Excellent, oh, no, it's a pleasure. Uh, where are we now? We're here. So, so air cells of the temporal bone. So even if you said temporal bone is fine, air cells also. It's not the mastoid process though. Mastoid process, let me show you that also. Mastoid process is part of the bone, but there, here it's the mastoid process showing up. That's the mastoid process. So we're not there yet. We are here. That's where I took the image. You'll get there. You'll find the S of the mastoid process also. And what is G? That is the occipital bone. Correct. Well done. Well, let's keep going then. There you go. Uh, what is A? Yes, that's the mastoid process. Or mastoid air cells. Uh, as long as you know the air cells there. That process is well. All right, you a hard one again. I'm sorry about that. Still coronal view. Still slowly coming anteriorly. So if, if, if you notice, uh, as a matter of fact, let me, let me show you again as we go further up. I think we lost a bit of track of that. This is where we were. And so this is right at the back. Uh, this is a bit more anterior. This is a bit more anterior. This is a bit more anterior. And now it's a bit further anterior. Yes, I believe it is the sphenoid bone. 
right at the cell Arctica. Yes, B is parietal bone. Yep, B is parietal bone. C is slightly different. I'm not sure if you can see there's a suture right here. Correct, that's temporal bone. So E is a bone and D is a joint of that bone. People who chat use that bone and joint a lot. Go on, uh, close. Temporal mandibular. Because that's, that's temporal. <laughs> yeah, and uh, mandible. You know, logic sometimes works, but sometimes it actually doesn't. So, uh, but nonetheless, yeah, temporal mandibular joint, and uh, and that's the mandible, and that's the joint that is up here that you move because of while you're while you're speaking, and chewing. Alrighty, next one. So we're now one further up, and you can now start seeing the nasal passages. So, what is it? Now the funny thing is with A. No, let me put the A to the side because I put it right in the middle, but I didn't need to. It is not the pride of birth. The reason you know it isn't is because the Sattel suture doesn't exist there anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, that was awesome. Yes, you see there's a sattel suture there? And now it's the frontal bone. Top of the nose. Yes, yes, yes. Crib reform plate of the ethmoid bone. Yep. Correct. No, but D is the bone. It is the same bone as this. So it's still the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone still continues down and creates the nasal septum. Excellent. And E is? I'll give you a hint. It's the hard palate. Oh, is that just the palatine bone? It could be actually because it's quite posterior. So yeah, I will say it is the palatine bone. Okay, let's keep on going. Now we've come a bit further up and it's that is A is frontal. It is the sign. It is not the sinus, but it is I because I've got a separate. I think I've got a separate quiz on the sinuses. I believe so. So I didn't put the sinus there, but it is. I'm. It's on the bone. So what bone does that sinus have? Whatever the bone of the sinus is. No, ethmoid sinuses are up here. That's this big sinus in the cheeks under the eye.
Okay, correct. So that's a max. So that's so that's the maxilla. The maxilla is the bone. And what do you think this is? Slightly tough, but. I'm sorry? No, it is not. No, the wing of the sphenoid is up here. No, that's still, actually, that's still the frontal bone. But no, the wing of the sphenoid will be a bit posterior on this side. There's something outside, outside of the skull. Attaches to the temporal bone. As a matter of fact, it's part of the temporal bone. Hard one. Zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Does it sort of make sense now? Or how should I show? Let's, let's just go and see it. So Yes. You see you see that's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone? Let's if I click on that, that's what it looks like here. So that's what I clicked on. A bit further up, I think. It was yeah, at this level. So it is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Keep going. Oops, no, it's this one. Okay, yes. Now we're further up in the head. A is still the frontal bone. It's just it's, this is a bone which this sinus is of. Okay. So that nope, frontal sinuses are here. Oh, it's Maxilla. Maxilla, correct. Yes, I think it still is a cryptophone plate. Oh no, actually, if it is right in the midline, it is not the cryptophone plate. Now I might, I think I'm confused, but if it's slightly to the side, it's the cryptophone plate. But if it's right in the midline, it is, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not your fault, my fault. So I think it's still the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone, yeah. Okay. So I'll actually, I'll take that out. It's the ethmoid bone. Sure what I've done with D, actually. Uh, isn't that the, one that's just in here? Uh, the, the lacrimal bone? No, I, is it? What am I doing with D? Let me just check myself. You know, sometimes I don't realize what I'm doing. Uh, but let's. But it's good that we can. So it's about at this level. No, oh, which level? It is about this level. And I have. No, it's about at th which level is that? It's about this level. And I've, clicked on that and I think that's still part of the ethmoid bone that's still part of the that's still part of the ethmoid bone or was it yeah I think it's part of the orbit uh, part of the ethmoid bone does make the orbit and I think that's what I was getting to I sometimes still confuse myself but uh, but it's good the objective is the discussion so we I'm glad we have that and um, uh, e is, yeah, E is. No, it is a bit further up. You've already answered this. It's still the same bone, but it's another part of the bone. No, that that is the vomer. Just above that is the vomer. But the hard palate and this, the upper teeth, are part of one bone. So E and F are actually... Yep, it is. It is the maxilla. That is the maxilla also, and I'm sure the different terms for it. I can't remember them, but they are all the maxilla. 
Your maxilla is good enough. If you were doing, uh, if you were giving a radiology exam, then you would need to know these different parts, but I think we're not there yet. All right, so now we're really, really further up. And you can see the eyes are just like squeezing. I mean, it's coming down. It's nothing. No way, it's not the nasal bone. But the nasal bone is here. That is the nose, so A is above the nose. It's above the eyes also. Yep, that's the frontal bone. And so which one is the nasal bone, B or C? Yep, B is the nasal bone. There are two on each side, so that would also be the nasal bone. And what would C be? No, lacrimal would be further back there. It is that same bone that we talk about that's in the midline, higher up. We've answered this a few times. No, the vomer is lower down. The ethmoid bone. Yes. Yeah, the thin part, absolutely. And D. Going to the teeth. That's under the nose, card palate still, teeth. That is the maxilla. Now let me just check this and let me go there again. Let's see how far ahead I, whoops, the other way. And so we've got this, so we've come, this is where I've taken this image. Where is that? So, yep, that is the ethmoid bone, pretty much, because you see over there, that is the ethmoid bone. Fact, let me show you an image of the nasal septum and then it'll become much easier for you to understand this thing. Schematic diagram. This is a good one. So that's the nasal septum. And once, yep, so it's pretty clear. So you see, that is the vomer, as it says. And that's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Maybe I should have remembered that. That's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So the inferior part of the nasal septum is made by the vomer, and that is the ethmoid bone. And there's a cribriform plate, and there's the maxilla, and just right at the end of the maxilla is the palatine bone. Let's look at this one also. Same thing. That's cartilage, that's the ethmoid bone, that's the vomer, and then the, that's the maxilla, and that's the palatine bone. So there we go. And the nasal bone, do we have the nasal bone here? So deviated septum. Nasal bone is on this. Yeah, it is, it, is, it, is, it is mentioned there, but it's better to see it this way because it's not in the midline. That, these are, there are two nasal bones. So this part on top of our nose, the cartilage that moves is cartilage that's attached here. But this hard part that's up on top are two nasal bones on each side. And then all underneath here is maxilla. All right. So trauma to the nose, punch to the nose, nasal bone could be fractured, or a very common fracture is nasal septum. As a matter of fact, they say boxers just all have fractured nasal septums. They just live that way. Okay, where were we? All right, there you go. So it is the perpendicular plate now that I remember of the ethmoid bone. So I've become a better anatomist now. All right, so let's keep going. And I can't hear you, but I think perpendicular plate. I'm, 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 I'm happy. 
I'm absolutely happy with ethmoid bone, and most people will be. Yeah. Yeah, it's very thin. It, A is the nasal bone. And that's still the ethmoid. It is so thin, I can't believe I remember this, but I remember this from med school. Um, cocaine addicts actually lose it because cocaine is a vasoconstrictor and over time, the nasal septum just, you know, disintegrates. And then they've got a real problem because they don't know how to do cocaine anymore. <laughs> so that's how thin it is. Yeah, there are other ways. I'm sure there are other ways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that's it. That's it for the coronal view. Oh, no, one last one. That's for you. So that's not a bone. What's the left? What's at the right of the tip of the nose? Nasal cartilage. Nasal cartilage. That's it. I just thought I'd show you so you know what it looks like. Yeah. All right. So let's keep going. Sagittal view. Not too much left though. And uh, that starts with you. Uh, nice flowy hair. Yeah, I would have just said here, but Pinna is good. And I think that's called, I, even anatomically, I think that's just called the lobe of the ear. But yeah, I'm, I don't go into the anatomical parts of the ear. I don't think there's any point. But okay, now. <laughs> it looks pretty cool in CD. It does look pretty cool. Um, and all right, so now we're getting to the skin. And that's the lateral view. These are two bones. The first two bones that sort of show up from the lateral side. And there is the suture between them also. Whose turn is it? I think it's J J's turn. One is parietal, one is temporal. So which is which is parietal, which is temporal? Correct. And this one is temporal. And what is the suture called between them? Squaring the suture, correct. All right, now we want further deep. And this is for J mm, No, A is not temporal. It is not the frontal either. This is going to be hard. It is not the parietal. How many more have I got left? <laughs> About 15. But this is, this is the only time I've actually labeled it on the side of the skull. Because we, well, we haven't been able to see it from the side of the skull. It's part of the pterion. As a matter of fact, that's just where the pterion is. That is a sphenoid bone. B is, I'm sorry? No. No, we're, we're, two, we're two up on the outside. It, it is a continuation of this bone, and it goes this way, and then it goes further up. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, so the, 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 the mass, so D is the mastoid point. Yes. Of temporal. The temporal bone. Yeah. Mm, uh, it's another process of the temporal bone. <laughs> Zygomatic process. <laughs> Let me show it to you. Uh, uh, and C, I'll just, C is the prior. C is the, 
I see it's a parietal lobe. Uh, so the parietal, parietal bug. So I'll, I'll leave it. That picture looks yes. It looks like a Dr. Seuss character. Dr. Seuss character. But I know all the Dr. Seuss characters because I have kids that read them. Which one? Yeah, oh, hmm. I don't know. Yeah. You know, like, it <laughs> could be. It could be a Dr. Seuss. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That does look like a Dr. Seuss character. No, that's Knox. That's Knox. I. It's Knox. <laughs> Knox in box. That's him. <laughs> it's Knox from the side. Okay. Uh, <laughs> zygomatic process of temporal of temporal bone. No, no, that's all right. So this is. So this is what it is. So that's not the te uh, zygomatic process of the temporal bone. That is the zygomatic bone. That is the zygomatic bone. That is the temporal bone. So what you're seeing is you're being able to see this and you see that. And you see that. So those three things have shown up. Cool. And that is the sphenoid bone. So if that is, this, it's pretty deep actually. That might not be the sphenoid. So I might, got, might have gotten that wrong. So that might still be the temporal bone actually. Let's see here again. Yeah, that's just, so I'm, I'm probably picking up, or maybe it's the zygomatic bone. I can't tell what that is actually. No, it can't be the zygomatic. Hmm, well let's, let's see where we are. Well, here's the ear and there's that. Then we saw the mastoid processes. So what is that? So that is the zygomatic process for sure. What is that? What is that? Uh, I can't tell from there. That looks like the parietal bone from there. I think that's the sphenoid. Yes, that's the sphenoid. So further back from it, I think that's still the parietal bone. Oops, I think that's just the parietal bone. I think it's the same bone as this. It's the parietal bone. So good, that's the parietal bone. Same as that. All right. Let's keep going down. Now we're one step further. Okay, I believe so. I think A, I'm still looking at that. And I think A is still parietal. And I think E is also still parietal. C is that, that arch then goes and joins C. So if you, if you go to the one previously, that's the arch, that arch is going to go and now it's going to join this thing. what we saw here. That is exactly, that's a zygomatic bone. That is a zygomatic. Personally, I think B might still be the parietal bone. I think that's all parietal bone. So I'll, I'll put parietal for B. No, D is not the mastoid process. The mastoid process was in the previous slide. So that is the mastoid process. But now we've got a bit deeper. And so we've got a little new bone coming out that will go this way. 
And that's a joint, as a matter of fact. It's the same joint that you had uh, previously. <laughs> it's a joint space. So that's a Correct. If that's a temporal mandibular joint, then what would this be? Yep. That is the mandible. And what is F? Yes, that's the occipital lobe. Correct. Now we're further one step deeper. Yeah, A is frontal bone. Mm, frontal sinus will show. That's below the eye. Yes, that is the maxilla. I actually think it is sphenoid, but now between this one and the previous one, I'm getting a so that so is that the sphenoid bone also, or is or is that the frontal bone because there's a suture? So let's have a look. So if you look here, oh, where the ears go, there are the ears, and I think we're a bit further up. We're about at this level, and what bone is this? Mm, that that is the sphenoid bone so that would be sphenoid this we got right that's zygomatic that's sphenoid now is this frontal that is frontal because you see that's over there so that's sphenoid that's frontal and that's the zygomatic bone so what did we write here i put them all as parietal well that's sphenoid bone oops bend sphenoid uh, that's frontal because that's the suture, that's the frontal bone, and that is the parietal bone. Would you agree? I think so. All right, we've done this. Oh, I didn't label this because we're just going one step further, but there's no point of labeling this because now I'm going straight into the midline. And I'm sorry, you got a really, really hard one. And, and I forgot to, and I forgot to add J here. Yes, A is frontal bone, correct? B is nasal. Bone. B is nasal. So for C and C and C and D, remember that they are right in the midline. Let me see if I can make them. Pop up. <laughs> no, no, it is it is right in the midline. So no, there is a bone right in the midline. Yes, so which one is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, C or D? C. Correct, so that's the ethmoid bone. And what would D be? D is the vulva. Correct, D is the vulva. Well done. Well, I think we've got our nasal septum down now. 
and I'll revert these to gray. <laughs> I'll do it another time. All right. What's next? No, they're pointing at two different things. But yes, they're both part of the hard palette. So one's the anterior part of the hard palette and, and one's the posterior part of the hard palette. Yes, which was E is maxilla, correct? Yes, that's good. Palatine bone, correct. Well done. And yep, now let's go up here. Fair enough. Or if you think it's easier for you, you can, because uh, it's coming through Zoom, it might not be clear. You can use your, um, the PDF I gave you. Yes, but no, yes and no. It's in the midline, sort of that area, but a bit anterior to it. Yes, it's part of the ethmoid bone, but what part of the ethmoid bone is right there, even has holes in it, which I guess we can see here. Cribriform plates. Oh, it's it's the the cribriform plate is the reason it has, and the cribriform I think also means uh, um, sieve like. And if you look at the image, this, this is a good schematic image. The olfactory nerve is a bulb that is in, it's not through the nerves, but it has these small little nerves coming through. And those are the olfactory nerves and they come through the cribriform plane. Yep, that's good. And that's how it looks like in a, a dissection. And uh, furthermore, it happened to uh, happens to people. Uh, if you have a car accident, in which you have a coup, counter coup injury or any injury here in which you know the head moves a bit, these nerves can actually get ruptured. And once they get ruptured, and if all of them rupture, then you lose your sense of smell, which also means that you lose your sense of taste because taste is actually smell. The taste you get from your yeah, I mean the t the the yeah you get salt you get salt sweet sour and bitter, and the texture, but you will never be able to taste vanilla or chocolate or lemongrass or turmeric, or any of that. So it's some people get, uh, some people get really upset. Uh, all right, so that's the cover for play G. No, that's my bone ends here, and then another bone starts here. And that is the cella tersica. So what bone makes the cella tersica? That also has an air cell. No, no, no. Not, not the private bones on them. Sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone, that's the sphenoid ear sinus. 
Friday bones are on the side. And H is this inferior bone here that also opens up here. Yes, that's the occipital bone again. And I is part of this No, it's it's actually part of C2. It is the dens of the C2. Yeah, because it's a dens, and that is something that... Let's see, so that's the dens. You see, that's the dens. So that's what it looks like. So it's basically, it's, it's an extension. So C2 has an extension that points upward, and the C1 um cut, rotates around it so that's what the c that's the c1 but that itself is the dens of c2 so that's how so if you look if you look further back so that's c1 that's c2 and if you move more to the center then the dens is going to show pop up here and be right in the midline there and if you keep going further, then obviously it'll go back down again, and that's the other end of C, C2, C1 and C2. So if you're right in the midline, this is what the dens will look like, and this is what C1 will look like. That's both C1. Yeah, dens covers two levels, because it is part of C2, but it needs to extend up to C1. And uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a dens. So which one is this one? Should be good enough to see. So you see that's C two, and that's the dens, and that's C one. Well, this this is good. So they've cut C one out, but that's C two. Yeah, that's cut out. So yeah, never mind. No, this is good. Simple little one. C C two. That's the dens, and there's C one. So that's how it rotates. That's why it's the axis. All right, let's keep going. All right, we've done this one. The foramina. Are you all happy to continue, or do you want a break? So what we have left are the foramens and the, I, I kept the pathological slides not too busy because I knew it'll take long for this one. It was just like the anatomy was a bit complicated. Uh, so we can take a break now or we could take a break uh, uh, at, in about 20 minutes. Okay, well then. Okay. Mm -mm. I got a drink of water and I'm, I, I just I just sit here for my break anyway. So let's keep going. Okay, here we are. It is just turn. We are right at the top. Not not all the way to the top, but now these are the foramens. Yes, you've seen this a few times in different ways. Yep. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. So CN Three, four, V one, and yes, six. Correct. All right, let's keep going. This is for now. We're 
one step lower. And it won't be easy, but it's a foramen that points sort of anteriorly. It'll be the next one. So cranial nerve one goes through curvifum plate, then two goes through, then three, four, V1 and six. This is what V2 goes through. A, A is, correct, Cor correct, that is for Amen Rotunda. And that is for V2 CN. And uh, this one, that. No, 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 no. That this one is, it is not a foramen, it is a canal. And an artery goes through it, not a, uh, not a, uh, not a, uh, no. And that artery forms a, that is the carotid canal. Yes, that is the carotid canal, absolutely. And it's the upper part of the carotid canal. All right, let's keep going further down. So, I mean, I should move, move them out of the way, but that's one A and that's B. Correct. And what goes through it? And what is it called? Correct. The mandibular branch of the trigeminal. Mandibular. Yep. V2 is the maxillary. Right. Correct. Yes. That goes to the terion then. All right. C is a continuation of what this was slightly higher up. Yeah, that's more of the carotid canal. And D. Correct. Yes, acoustic meatus and canal. Correct. And what cranial nerve is in here? Seven and eight. And what are the names? Yeah, absolutely. And vestibular cochlea obviously goes to the ear, and that's true. But facial starts its course here and then goes around and comes out of the stylomastoid foramen. But the reason I'm saying is any issue here, if it compresses on the facial nerve, will lead to an ipsilateral facial droop. So sometimes ear pathology or, or, or masses in this area actually present with a facial droop. So that's why it is relevant. Even though it it seems unrelated, but that's 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 you know relevant. Okay, this is fuge. You got an easy one. That is the jugular foramen, correct? And what goes through the jugular foramen? IJV, yep. The internal jugular vein. And which cranial nerves? Which one's the left? Nine, yes. 
10 and 11. No, because there's one frame on the left and that is what 12 goes through. So what's craving 11, 9? The name? No, that's 12. Gloss of pharyngeal is 9, correct? 10 is the big one. Some even say the most important nerve in the body. Vegas, Vegas nerve. And 11 is? There's a dad joke for 11. Watch Crane of 11 and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> and why is that a jack dad joke? Because it's, it's, it's the spinal accessory nerve. And what it does is it, you can, it, 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 it's a, it, it innervates the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid, which makes you shrug your shoulders and move your head outside. <laughs> yeah. Few, few opportunities to say that joke. So, Crane Lab 9, 10, 11 come through the jugular foramen and the internal jugular vein starts the jugular foramen. Correct. And the sinuses, which is the final sigmoid sinus, drain in the jugular foramen. Okie dokie. All right, let's keep going. And that is for you, the last foramen. Hypoglossal canal. And it has cranial nerve 12 in it. Correct. And that is motor to the tongue. Correct. Okay. Again, the same, but from a different angle. So it's your turn. We've done this before. Surprise, I put it back up here. Crib reform plate again. And again, because we've done this so many times. <laughs> All right, now this one. This is for Claire, correct. That's the optic canal. And we know the optic nerve goes through that. This one's for You had this last time also. It's the one that goes forward like that. No, no, jugular frame is further down. You got it last time. Rotundum. That is frame and rotundum. But you should see it again. It is the one frame that opens up this way. And the maxillary nerve comes up like that, crosses over the maxilla, and then moves down like that. Through the foramen rotundum. All right, for you. Yes. All right, that's true. No, I've put me off too, because to me, it looks like the jugular foramen, but the correct order, it should be foramen ovale. And I'm confused, is that foramen ovale or is jugular? So I'm gonna have to look. So just give me a second. So it's a uh, coronal view. And where is it? So we did, we did this. Okay, we keep going down. So it's that one. Oh, that is ovale. No, that's ovale. You see? So that's form. So that's form in ovale. So ovale, it is. So it is. It is in. It is in sequence. <laughs> yes. So, but it's good. It's important to see them from a different angle. 
All right, and uh, that should be B. That's a good question. Uh, a or B. But I I think you I think what I did here was that I just is that one. So it is still forming the volley, but I just took the satchel view. So that is for him in the volley. And what do you think B is? And that's also not the chronic now. No, form of Spinoza would be right around here. And I don't think I, I labeled it. This is a bit lower down. It's a big one. Well, let's see. It's this one here. So if I click on it, what does it do here and here? So it is this, it is the equivalent is equivalent of this one. Nope, that's the jugular frame. Because the jugular frame is in the right near, you know, where the occipital condyles are, or above them. So that's the jugular frame, and let's look at it again here. Like, for example, uh, where did we go? Where was Foreman Ovali? Oh. Where'd you go? There's Foreman Valley. And that's there. And that's there. Foreman Spinosum, I think I didn't uh, I didn't do another view. So there's Foreman Spinosum. Look at that one. Right next to Valley. Uh, then this is a carotid canal here. And while I move through the carotid canal, see what it looks like here. And see what it looks like here. And if I keep going further down, that we will do that again. That's the internal acoustic meatus. And if I keep going further down, where jugular foramen go? It should be around here. Where are you, jugular foramen? Oh, I'm going up. That's why. Oh, that's the jugular foramen. So. That'd be the jugular foramen. But that's fine. Let's do the next one. So it's not exactly now. Now you see this thing here. That that is what I'm pointing to the next one. And I think I changed the contrast a bit for some reason. No, it's late. It's late. It's, it's late. So I'll I'll help you out here. So we know what that is. And that's the carotid canal. So if you look at this view here, let me just move the arrows away. That is your form in the valley. That's the carotid canal. And that's the jugular frame. So it's the carotid canal. Yeah, so that is the carotid canal. So if I move this out of the way, if I move this out, yeah. that is form and rotundum. Ovali is just here. But in a different view, that's the carotid canal, and that is the jugular frame. So that is the carotid canal. And let's keep going. Your turn. Not too hard, something that meets from the outside and the inside. Yeah. Correct. Very good. And then A would be? Internal. Correct. Internal acoustic meatus. 
And what would that be? That's the cochlea. Those are the three semicircular canals. Cool, huh? Right there. That's the cochlea. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't teach it either. I, I wouldn't have taught it. It's, it's too advanced for you know, uh, for us. It's a pretty thing. Yeah, it's a pretty thing. And it's, and it's a pretty, and it, and it, and it's a very, it's a very, it's also very pretty in its function. It, it does, it has a be beautiful, beautiful function. And um, so, cochlea is one of the uh, most fascinating things in human, it, not anatomy but physiology. I, I find it quite fascinating. Um, and uh, here we are. So this is Jack's turn. What's left? No, that's the jugular frame. Yeah, let's go there. That's the little sweat I'll go. I shouldn't be clicking on it. Uh, let's do this one. Mm. So where were we? I think that I said is the jugular. Yep, that is the jugular frame. And that's the jugular frame. So I'm clicking on this. And if I and that thing, yeah, that thing. So I'll. Oh, that's fair. What, what's the next? What's the next foramen under the jugular foramen? Um, Hypoglossal canal. Co correct. Hypoglossal canal. It is. Yeah. It's just next to the foramen magnum. Let's see. Well, just give me one second. Well, now that we're here. Hypoglossal canal. You might as well see it how it looks like in the skull. Mm, which is the best? This is very hard to view. This shows a generally a good view. Let me show you what these are. It's a bit tough to see. It's not very good. Well, maybe that's a better quality image. Yeah, so that is the foramen uh, ovale. Rotundum is there, so you won't see it. That's ovale, that's spinosum. That's the jugular foramen. And right down there, actually, you can't see it, but going in there is the uh, uh, hypoglossal canal. This, you can see it better inferiorly, actually. I mean, I, I wish they showed something. There. Sure, no, absolutely. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is great. There you go. Oh, that's the hypoglossal. This is the best. This is the best. I've used this image before in class. That's the hypoglossal canal. So uh, that's that's and that's the jugular foramen there. Uh, and I can't tell the rest. I think that's the carotid canal going in. Oh, you see this? This is good to see. That's the stylomastoid foramen. So this is where the styloid process is. Mostly in skulls, the styloid process is broken because it's so thin and tiny. And that's your mastoid process. That's your stylomastoid foramen. The facial nerve exits here. Injury here also can cause facial droop. All right, so there you go. That was the hypoglossal canal. Let's keep going down. Oh yeah, this is the question. I decided to then I thought, why don't I take all images like this? But I decided to like take an image pointing to all three things and it is the same thing. And interestingly, I just showed it to you. So what is that? Again. No, 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 hypoglossal canal is here. I showed it to you there. That's a style of mass start for him. It's seen, it's terribly seen, and it's one of those few things that axial sees it terribly because it's in the axial view going down. But if in, in the coronal and the sagittal view, you can see it fairly well. And that's just style of mass start for him. And so the facial nerve will be exiting from there. 
Yeah, it is small. It, it, that's actually quite, you know, it's a very fair point to say for, for a nerve as, as rel important as the facial nerve. It's actually quite small, you know. It's very... Yes, there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, the skull, the skull is, I mean, uh, it's like you can learn the upper limb and lower limb and collectively it's simpler than just the skull and, and the brain. <laughs> a lot going on. And uh, I think that's the end of the anatomical quiz. No, one last one. I think I added this. I, I think I even forgot to put ABC on it. I forgot to quiz you on it. But yeah, I just thought I'll sh show you the... The, uh, the things that you can see on the eye. So what nerve is this one? Optic. That's the optic nerve. What would that, this muscle be? Medial rectus. And this one would be? That is the lateral rectus. And you know, you can see others also. Wait, just give me, where is it? Here we go. So let, let's show you. Let's show it to you here. Now let's just, if you look at that, that's the optic nerve. That's the superior rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, medial rectus. And that is the superior oblique that's coming. Now, if I keep moving forward, you'll see the superior oblique curve over. And, and there's your superior oblique muscle. And then down here, it's not very well. Let me just make it bigger. And you can see the inferior oblique underneath. So let me just... So if you, that's the inferior oblique right there. And the superior oblique, no, I'm not, oh, it's too magnified, I actually can't see it. <laughs> so the superior oblique should be up here. So you actually can see your four muscles and maybe a better window would be better, like a pulmonary window, mm, yeah, kind of better. Or actually, uh, after. Can't say. Yeah, that looks kind of better. So that so you can see a, you can see these four muscles on both sides, and um, go back to bone. And if you and you can even like you can even see them, you can see them well. The you can see them well. That's your medial rectus here and medial rectus there. And that's your lateral rectus here and lateral rectus there, and. Uh, Spear bleak, let's see if we can see it slightly better. You can't really see it too well over there. But you can see, you can see, you can see, uh, you can see a bit of the belly going this way. Okay, so we've done that. Pathology quiz, so let's go. This should be easier. Okay, so can you see the pathology here? Absolutely. So when you get a punch in the eye, have you ever done a dissection of the eye, like in high school or something, like a, a not not a human eye, but a bull's eye or something like that? The eye is surprisingly tough. It, you'd, you'd be amazed how tough the eye is. So a lot of times when the eye gets a punch, the eye still survives and it does get damaged at times, but it fractures the bones around it. And um, and so that's that could be a spear orbital fracture or, or inferior orbital fracture. Uh, and you can see it's bleeding into the sinuses. You see that? That sinus is empty. That sinus is full. And there's blood in there also. So long-term consequences. What nerve is here and what nerve is here? The nerve up here is the V1, the supraorbital nerve. And it supplies sensation to the upper scalp. And V2 is the nerve here, which is the maxillary which supplies not only sensation to your cheek, but also to your upper teeth and your hard palate on top. So V1 will be damaged up there, V2 will be damaged down here. Okay, supraorbital fracture and infraorbital fracture, I believe, and bleeding into the, into the frontal sides. Okay, next one. I don't know what that is, but I think it's the CSF leak. Now I forget. Let me see what it was. Injury to the cribriform plate. All right, injury to the cribriform plate it is. Now that they're pointing there. 
Okay. Well, there's a deviated septum. Might be natural. Might be a naturally deviated septum. That definitely is. And, um, and, and the maxillary sinus is kind of full. So when you do have uh, a deviated septum, that could be a cause of sinuses not being able to drain. So they do have to assess for that. If you've got sinus, chronic sinusitis, they have to assess whether it's a deviated septum or if it's a, a issue with the drainage of the sinuses. Yes, I believe there's, 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 there's or, or sinusitis. It could just be fluid, uh, serous fluid, uh, or it could be blood, or it could be CSF. If the tribriform plate gets damaged, you CSF leaks. So sometimes people with a you know a mild head injury might have some f clear fluid fall out of their nose, and that's CSF. Okay, next one. Something with the optic nerve. Bit larger than usual. Yeah, that's the, the, yeah, that's probably just the plane. So, yep, yeah, that's an optic neuropathy. You know, they could be they could be painless, but in certain kinds of very painful, and it hurts to move your eyes. Imagine that. <laughs> it hurts to move your eyes. Jeez. It depends. If it's autoimmune, then you have to treat it as an autoimmune disease, you know. And if it's if it is uh, if it's infective, then it has it is it has to be treated with an infection. So uh, this is optic neuritis, but I don't know what reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, MS can cause optic neuritis, an autoimmune opt optic neuritis. Correct. All right, well, there you go. What is there? Oh, this is a fracture. Now, what is this thing here that's fractured? So, what is the structure that get fractured? What's, what's this? What bone is this? That's the zygomatic one. You know it. You know it. Yeah, there's a sphenoid. So the sphenoid's fractured there. It's slightly lower than the optic canal. So that is, which you got right previously, the superior orbital fissure. All right, down we go. Superior orbital fissure fracture. Now, what is this? Another fracture. I think when I was taking them, I noticed the previous one as a supraorbital. I didn't know it also had an infraorbital, but this I took for the infraorbital fracture. And so I'll ask again, what nerve is lives right in the infraorbital area? V2. V2, it is. So in, in, in something like this, you have to check for uh, V2 uh, nerve loss, which is loss of sensation on the cheek and the upper molars and the palate. All right, let's keep going down. Base of orbit fracture. Okay, now they've inserted a probe into this foramen. And I don't know why, but I took it just so you, we sort of revise what that foramen was. And now I can't even remember what that foramen is. Okay, let's just go down and see what that foramen is. It's forum of Bali. Yeah, really? Is that where forum of Bali was? Forum of Bali wasn't there. But, uh... No, I think, I think it's, a, it's a neurosurgical procedure. Some sort of neurosurgical procedure. Yeah. Because to get probes into the brain, they, they use, if you uh, rotate neurosurgery, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 use, they will use foramen of body to go in, uh, foramen of tandem to go in, superior orbital fissure or inferior orbital fissure or the orbital wall to go in, depending on where they're trying to get to. 
I wonder too. I wonder too. If they do. If they do. Okay, now that's an abnormal mass in this in this area. So what what is this area? Yes, I don't know if it's an acoustic neuroma, but it is in the right place. So mass in the internal acoustic canal. So you got that in the right place. So next one. Okay, so there's a mass here and a mass here and a mass here. It's the same mass, it just gets bigger. So it's this, but you can see the foramen here, but it's blocking that foramen on this side. So what foramen is that? The other side of this foramen. Haha. <laughs> okay, I won't push your brains too hard at this point in the night. It is the jugular foramen. That's a jugular foramen schwannoma. I don't know if I got the spelling right, but that's what it is. All right. Yes, that's true. Now, this is in this area. This person had Horner syndrome. Too much to think about, huh? What is this and what is that? Carotid canals. So what does the carotid canal have to do with Horner syndrome? Horner syndrome is loss of sympathetic to the eye. And the sympathetic to the eye travels up in the internal carotid artery. So this is actually Horner syndrome because of hypoplasia of the internal carotid artery in the carotid canal. Now, what is that? Oh, that's that. So this is, this is full. Yes. And the Xavier Science is full of liquid. And I think over time, it starts, it makes a passageway. Especially some people have teeth that, that go all the way up into the maxillary Science. I remember my dentist checked for me. And... And, and uh, you know, because if they need a tooth extraction or something and they open the maxillary sinus, then, you know, the maxillary sinus constantly drains into the mouth. Uh, and sometimes if your maxillary sinus is chronically inflamed, it will make an opening into the mouth. So, severe maxillary sinusitis. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, that's Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It would be greatly appreciated.